orgasmic patterns. And that is basically clapping and, you know, the children will then, or you guys will then copy what I do. So you need to listen to how I clap and you copy the clap the same way. Okay, so listen really carefully now. Hey, now you do it. Copy me. Well done. Okay, let's do another one. And listen to how many claps I do as well. Good job. Okay, next one. And you can almost say it in your head like one, two, mm, mm. And as you're doing that, you're clapping. Good job. Let's try another one. I have to think of it in my head as well. Um, excellent. And one more. I'm going to try and make it tricky. Let's think. Okay, so that was one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Hope you got that. You can see on the side it says, guess who? I look like a dot and I end off sentences. I'll help you to take a breath when reading. What punctuation mark is that? Okay, that is a full stop. Well done. And a full stop is just a dot. Okay, when you make it, you shouldn't be making a big circle like you see there. You should actually just be making a dot, just like with your, with your pencil or your crayon. The next one. I am always at the end of a sentence when asking a question. What um, punctuation mark do you think that is? I'm always at the end of a sentence when asking a question. Yes, a question mark. And that is what it looks like, a question mark. The next one, I am used at the end of a sentence to show a strong emotion or to show that someone is shouting. Which punctuation mark do you think that is? Okay, now I'm going to show you, we're going to have a wheel that's gonna come up on the screen. It's going to spin and it's going to land on a punctuation mark. You need to tell me what is the name of the punctuation mark that comes up. Hey, okay, I'm going to click. Oh, and what does it land on? Ta da! It is a full stop. Okay, so it landed on a full stop. Let's see what it lands on next. Again, another full stop. Let's see if we can write, give us something else. And yes, little thing over there. Ah, oh, what is that punctuation mark? Yes, a question mark. Excellent. Let's see. There's one more. Let's see if it gives us the same or if it gives us a different one. There we go. And the last punctuation mark is a exclamation mark. Well done. Okay, if you struggle to say it, break it up. Exclamation mark. So really long. So like last week, I taught you syllables. Okay, you could also clap it out. So exclamation mark. Loads of syllables. Okay, so let's discuss what punctuation mark goes at the end of these sentences? So the first one is, how are you? Now you need to think, is it 
A, full stop. Is it an exclamation mark or is it a question mark? Okay, we want to know if it is an exclamation mark. Am I shy? How are you? Or am I asking you a question where you need to reply to me? How are you? Or am I just making a statement? How are you? And there's no reply, nothing. Which, ex which punctuation mark goes at the end? Well done. A question mark. Let's look at the next sentence. Help me, please. Am I saying help me, please? And, and, and you must reply. Or am I saying help me, please? And I'm shouting it. Or am I just saying help me, please? And no one really is going to respond to that. Okay. Excellent. It is an exclamation mark. Okay, I'm shouting, help me, please. I love to read. Okay, so the word behind that is read. And is that a statement? I love to read. Is it, I love to read? Am I asking a question for a reply? Or I love to read. Okay, so it also depends on what you want it to mean. Okay. So are you wanting to shout, I love to read, or are you wanting just to say, I love to read plainly? Okay, so I've put a full stop at there. I love to read just like that. I want you to write the sentences with the correct punctuation mark. So there you can see, you can choose between an exclamation mark, a question mark, or a full stop. So the first sentence, you can read this with me. Grade ones, you might even be able to read some of these words. So, the car is red. The next one, what time is it? And the last one, you are great. Okay, so write down the uh, sentences and put the correct punctuation mark at the end of it. This morning I did have a 30 seconds card. I've really been enjoy enjoying this actually to do. So I'm going to do it anyway. Um, there are five. Let's see if you can guess all five. So let me know in the comments what you think it is. Um, yeah, parents and children play together. See what you can come up with. So number one. Number one is there are seven colors. Um, you see it in the sky. It is from the sun's reflection on water droplets or rain. And it happens off, usually happens after it's raining or slowly starts to show when it just um, when it when it is raining, actually. OK, so that's number one. Number two, you eat with these two utensils. One goes in the right hand, one goes in the right hand. Um, some people swap it around. What is that? Number three is a wooden, um, uh, it, it's used to, almost said the word. It is a hand tool that is used to cut wood, generally has a 
forwards and backwards motion. Um, it's long and thin usually, and it has serrated blades. Let's see if you can get what that is. Number four, it is a small rodent. It's known for a bushy tail. And it usually, it, we, we think it eats nuts and it does, but it eats other things as well. I know you get ones that are underground and they have tunnels that very, yeah, that they go through. And then there's also ones that live in the tree. We usually see the ones that live in the tree. I know you get flying ones as well. So see if you can do number four. And then number five is a game. that I like to play with my enrichment children actually. So some of them should know this, we've done it before. And basically you have to draw a picture, you get a word, you have to draw a picture to your teammates and they have to guess what they think that picture is. And yeah, that team will then get a point or, so it's, it's the name of that game. That's number five. Let's see if you can get it. Answers. Number one, rainbow. Number two, knife and fork. Number three is saw. So it could also be saw, you saw with your eyes, but I decided to do, it was easier to explain a hand tool. Number four, squirrel. And number five, pictionary. The game Pictionary. Well done. Okay. So the book today is called Laughing Giraffe. In the long, in the days long ago, when Wartog was beautiful and Hippo lived only on the land, Giraffe was the noisiest animal on the great African plain. He shouted a lot and he laughed all the time. In the lucky bean tree, where the little weaver birds rested, Giraffe's, giraffe would pop his head up through the branches and take a mouthful of leaves and ho, ho, ho with laughter. The little weaver birds fell out of the tree with fright. In the wild date palms where the little sunbird snoozed, giraffe would pop his head up through the leaves and take a mouthful of ripe fruit and ho, ho, ho with laughter. The little sunbirds were thrown out of their nests. In the tall reeds, where the little kingfishers perched, giraffe would pop his head up through the branches and take a mouthful of water and ho, ho, ho with laughter. The little kingfishers tumbled into the water. One day, when the little egrets were sitting on a toothbrush bush, enjoying the warm sun, giraffe gave them such a fright that the little egret fell into a mud puddle. Ho, 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 laughed giraffe. That's actually how. Giraffe! The little egret scolded, you are loud and noisy and mean. Anybody can be noisy all the, all the time. Even I could be as noisy as you if I wanted to. You? That's a laugh, shouted Giraffe. Then we will have a competition to see who has the loudest voice. The little egret challenged him. Agreed, laughed Giraffe. Then let us go into the forest and we will shout back to the plane and see who has the loudest voice, said the little egret. And I shall judge the competition, offered Kudu.
The sun was just above Giraffe's left knee when they passed the lucky bean tree where the weavers rested. The sun was just above Giraffe's neck when they passed under the wild date palms where the sunbird snoozed. And it was just behind Giraffe's head when they finally stopped by the tall reeds where the little kingfishers were fishing. Now you must shout and tell the animals on the plane that you want what you want for dinner, said Kudu. Easy, yelled Giraffe. I want leafy thorn tree tips for dinner. And in a voice that could just be heard above the breeze, the little egret shouted, I want little brown beetles for my dinner. As they turned to head home, the, the little kingfishers flew high in the air singing, little brown beetles. As they passed the wild date palms, the little sunbirds flitted from flower to flower singing, little brown beetles. And as they passed the lucky bean tree, the little weavers were chattering, little brown beetles. When they finally reached the plane, Kuru asked the giraffes, what have you got for giraffes dinner tonight? Today we have crunchy toothbrush bush tips, said the giraffes. But I wanted leafy thorn tree tips, shouted giraffe crossly. Well, why didn't you say something, said the giraffes. Kuru then asked the egrets, what have you got for the littlest egg, egrets dinner tonight? Little brown beetles, said the egrets. That is what she called for. Then the littlest egret has the loudest voice, said Kudu. I declare she is the winner. The next day, whenever giraffe went, he heard all the animals on the great plain whispering. The literest egret has the loudest voice and he stayed very silent. And so today giraffe doesn't shout anymore and he certainly doesn't ho 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 like he used to. He keeps quiet as quiet but now and then Giraffe gets a little humps of a laugh and the other animals don't mind a bit. The end. <laughs>